have no idea how drone electronics work. All right, now the motors are speeding in the right direction. Each autonomous UAV needs a few key components. Very briefly, we have a power supply that connects to a power distribution board. The board powers your electronic speed controller, also known as an ESC, which then powers your motors. The power distribution board also downregulates the voltage and powers your flight controller, which is your UAV's main computer. It runs the software that flies your drone and communicates with all other components. Fixed-wing aircraft also have servos for control surfaces and other features. They are powered by the pins on your flight controller, alongside any peripherals like the GPS and compass unit, radio and video transmitters and receivers, airspeed sensors and more. The requirements for this drone are vertical takeoff and landing and the ability to perform autonomous missions. For that purpose I chose to run it on Ardopilot software. One of the entry-level flight controllers that run Ardopilot and support VTOL aircraft is the Speedy B F405 wing. While it does not have a triple redundant inertial measurement unit and high-speed processors, it seems to do a great job with smaller UAVs, especially for the price point. It does come with an app, but we'll hook it up via USB and install Ardopilot on it. Ardopilot is an open-source autopilot software suite that supports a wide range of vehicles, providing advanced features like autonomous navigation, flight stabilization and mission planning. It is widely used in both hobbyist and professional applications. A good alternative is PX4, but I have not tried it yet. After we install Ardoplane, we need to explain to the system what type of UAV we have. Like, does it have the ability to hover? How many motors does it have? Is it a tilt rotor design? And so on. The system needs all of that information and we have it from the manual provided by Flightery for this specific UAV. All we really need to do is to override it in the full parameters list via any ground control software. This is the Matic M10Q GPS and Compass. And this took me quite a while to wire because the compass uses a GH and this is SH type. So I had to solder the wires together and I made a few errors. The letters here should mostly match the letters here with the exception that the RX and the, the TX should be crossed. So RX from the one goes to TX in the other and vice versa. Are you listening? Right, major next step. Now this is the DJI O3 Air Unit, which is connected to the flight controller, which is connected to the battery. And that's important because you can only pair the DJI Air Unit while connected to battery, not via USB alone. And now when we paired it with the DJI remote, we can actually see the inputs of the remote. Here's another update. Last night I repurposed my piano stand and that essentially gives me easy access into the insides where all the wires are, uh, which is going to be rather fun to figure out. The other thing is that this uh, DJI O3 Air Unit, it starts overheating as soon as I plug it into the battery, which based on the forum seems to be normal. Uh, I mean, it's designed to be on an open drone with enough airflow, so I do need to insert a fan inside the fuselage because if they overheat, I'm pretty sure they will melt the plastic. There are airflow inlets here in the nose and everything else will just come out of the exhaust. Passive cooling while flying forward should be good, but during vertical takeoff and free arm checks, everything will overheat inside, so we need a fan. This is the nose of the aircraft and there are slots to insert an FPV camera. So since I'm using the DJI, I don't think this nose was designed for it because it doesn't fit 
all the way inside. Since I don't really want to print another one because they're a pain in the ass, uh, I will just use a grinder. Now that the DJI is mounted, uh, we have the other challenge and that this unit is overheating quite fast. So one thing we can do is to fit it in here, but that would block the airflow to all the other components inside. We could try to extend it further back, but that's exactly where the battery will be standing. And placing it on top of the battery would mean that getting the battery in and out of the plane would be very difficult. Mounting it on the side of the battery would mean that it would not get enough airflow. And so we don't really have a lot of options because this cable is limited. I will create a mount for it and attach it here to this, to this part. I think that's the only viable way of mounting this component. Let's print this. This is a super exciting moment because this is the first part ever that I've designed in 3D and that I've printed and that it's actually functional. So now we have a mount for the DJI Air Unit inside this aircraft. This is where the battery needs to be located and we should be able to move it up and down in order to accommodate for the ideal center of gravity. And the good part is that this bracket actually slides on top of the battery, so it doesn't cause a conflict with that. For the past two days I've been trying to design a mount for the flight controller and the ESC in a way that would have enough airflow for cooling and it wouldn't melt any different plastics. And here is what I came up with. So essentially this will attach to the two carbon fiber rods. And then as you can see the FC is attached to it. And then the electronic speed controller will be attached by the screws. Okay, so now the module just clicks in place. And it's securely attached to the carbon rods. And the idea here is that the flight controller needs to be mounted very close to the center of gravity, which is why I opted in to attach it to this. Maybe vibrations would be an issue in the future, but we can add padding on the inside on a later design. But overall it looks good, because there is enough airflow coming from the nose all the way to the rear. Since the mount for the flight controller I designed is actually backwards, uh, we have to go into configuration once the plane is connected and then under advanced params we have this option called board orientation uh, this one yes so in my case board orientation should be yo what 180 degrees this should be the result so when the plane pitches upwards and downwards it should reflect properly Hello, hello, it's a new day and a new opportunity to finish this beauty. So, I stayed up until 2 a.m. last night, but I learned a lot. I wondered, how do you connect the electronic speed controller to the flight controller? And, you know, the power cables are already soldered, but you need to connect the signal wires, which I wasn't sure how. And I also wondered, how do you connect this electronic speed controller? controller via USB to a computer and so it turns out that there is a signal cable for every one of the motors and that's why here we have like at least four uh, blue wires that are for signals we have one red wire which we should not connect to our specific flight controller those are the pins for the servos and for the motors so every one of the motors has to be connected here. What I'm not sure about is we have uh, three signal wires 
for the three motors and only one ground. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure how that works yet. Maybe I have to wire the ground to just one of the signal wires, but we'll try that out and see how it works. Also, the ESC has some uh, current options, like to communicate the current with the flight controller. I'm still not sure when, when and whether I should even solder that, but let's take it one step at a time. So what I'm doing is I soldered the three signal wires and one ground wire and now I can just plug them in into these sockets for motors and servos and I think that's how it's gonna work. So one important note is that you should use electrical tape in order to isolate the big wires from all of the pins inside of here because it's very easy for them to touch. So I found this wiring diagram and it essentially shows one ground and the three motors that we need but I'm not sure about those two. So one for them is for current and the other is TX. So I'm not really sure what they do, we're gonna try to work it out without them. This is gonna be my first attempt. So the four wires, three signal wires and one ground wire. We just plug in into the S bus 1, 2 and 3, where the ground wire just comes to one of the S buses. So yeah, I'll give that a try. Next order of business, I need to solder the motors. One mistake on my part, we actually, for the tricopter configuration, we actually need the fourth motor instead of the third. So we're just gonna use numbers one, two, and four. Now all of the motor wires are soldered onto the ESC and now all I have to do is plug everything together and see whether the connections are correct which would be a wonder if they are because this is my first time soldering anything electronics related. Alright, to check the motors I booted up this old laptop without a monitor so I hooked it to my monitor and installed Mission Planner. And now I'm configuring the motors, one, two, and four, as you can see, on the first three pins. So they are connected here to the first three pins, which is connected to the back of the ESC, and that powers the motors. And when I do the test, this is motor A. So that's working. For some reason, this is motor B which isn't working as expected. And then this is motor D, which is working as expected. All right, doing another test. This is motor A, this is motor D, and now I rewired motor B. which for some reason this sound different, but I guess we'll just go with it. This is the first time we have everything plugged. So we have the GPS. I still have to 3D print a mount for it. We have this custom bracket that we made, the custom mount with the flight controller and the ESC where everything is wired. And we have connected the VTX. This is the DJI O3 Air unit, and I just extended its wires so that it can reach all the way back here. So, let's plug everything in. All right, so it seems that the GPS is connected, the flight controller is happy, and the VTX needs its controller. 
Okay, that was also the sound of the electronic speed controller. And now let's boot this. And we should see the DJI going green because we've already paired it once. Yes. All right, so now we are connected. <laughs>